I started watching Rocket Jump back in 2012 with the premiere of Video Game High School. I loved the creativity they packed into every episode they released. Through this exploration, I discovered the soon-to-follow Corridor Digital channel. This was around the time I landed my first job in computer graphics, and I was excited to implement the techniques I was learning online. YouTube channels like Corridor Digital, Windbush, New Plastic, Grayscale Gorilla, and iDesign helped me push myself to grow and expand my artist's tool belt. When I heard the news that Clint would be leaving Corridor Digital to pursue his own content, I was excited to see what he would do. Since his departure, he has broken records with his massive community challenges and competitions, all in the spirit of helping other artists level up. This month, with the announcement of Clint's newest community challenge, I decided it was time for me to take up the summon. Although I might do a full breakdown of my approach to this challenge in the future, I want to talk about what I learned. After all, that's what it was all about. Clint's challenge called all artists to use the provided template as a starting point. Within the template, we were given a character animation, a ground plane, and an animated camera. The animation was to be exactly 6 seconds at 24 frames per second. From there, it was a free game. Through hours of work and at least 10 rounds of feedback from friends and coworkers, I finally landed on a render I felt good about. At the onset of my project, I knew that the largest roadblock would be the character design. I had spent countless hours modeling hard surfaces, but beyond the horrible first attempt at sculpting a Mario figure, I have no experience with character design. To avoid spending the majority of my time working on an amateur character that would probably look more like Chucky, I decided to stick to my strengths and model a robotic character. I wanted my character to have high detailed meshes, so naturally I subdivided every surface, ending up with tens of thousands of polygons. My usual workflow is to import my character into Mixamo's auto rigger. I then connect the Mixamo rig up to the provided animation. This seemed like a great idea until my mesh is too dense. Here's where I learned a new technique. Remember that Unreal Engine 5 sample project showing off the massive lava monster character? For that demo, the creators explained how they attached nanite meshes to skeletal joints to maintain thousands of polygons in their character. Maybe I could do the same thing. Since my character is mechanical, it doesn't need to deform except at the joints. By attaching the different body points to their related joints and zeroing out the pivot points, I was surprised to see it worked. The next step was importing the mesh into Unreal Engine. Again, to my exhalation, with the meshes, body parts, Parented to the joints, Unreal Engine accepted the animation and kept the parenting, bringing my animated character in seamlessly. If you are working with an animated character that doesn't need mesh deformation, I would highly recommend giving this a try.
As I progressed on my environment creation, I soon ran into a second barrier. When using Unreal Engine, I tried to run high resolution renders along the way to make sure things are rendering correctly in the final output. Unfortunately, with layers of textures, decals, blend materials, foliage, assets, and imperfections, my insufficient Razer laptop couldn't keep up. My memory was running low. This may seem like an obvious lesson learned, but I got overconfident with Unreal Engine's ability to handle seemingly endless information. As I took a step back, I realized just how many 8K textures I was using. No wonder my memory was depleted. Running some tests, I determined that assets in the background could use 1K textures with seemingly no change to the render quality. Only the assets in clear focus needed the high resolution textures. Wishing I had not overestimated my hardware, I was forced to go back through and scale down my texture maps. Lesson learned. Landscape tiling has always been a difficult problem to solve. It is the first thing that gives your render away. Using larger textures, mixed materials, and landscape coverage can all help with this problem. But I discovered a new technique made easy by Unreal Engine. Implementing the engine's Megascan library, I ran across blend materials. Creating a blend material allows the users to paint different materials onto the same geometry while seamlessly mixing them together. Using this technique seemed easy at first, but unfortunately revealed a new problem. The way a blend material interacts with a mesh is by assigning material values to each vertice. Since I had optimized my meshes, I had few vertices to paint on, making it impossible to use the blend material. To solve this, I had to re-import my ground geometry, but this time with a high density of points. Creating the master material was easy. First, I imported the individual materials I wanted to mix from Megascan's library. Then, with the materials selected in the content browser, I returned to the Megascan's window, and under any material selected, the Create Blend Material option. Unreal Engine did the rest. Now, I was able to paint away, breaking up any nasty tiling. The best part of blend materials is the added feature of puddle maps. Not only can I paint mixed materials onto my geometry, but I can also paint puddles. This lesson is a game changer for me. Reflecting back over my render challenge submission, I want to grow from what I learned. The time put into this render is more than just creating a scene that I am proud of. It's adding new tools to my tool belt. In the words of Clint, it's all about leveling up. I now know how to create non-deformative character animations. In the future, I will check my texture resolutions before it is too late. I can create seamless landscapes with my new learned technique. All the lessons learned makes the time investment worth it. I hope that watching this video helps other artists learn with me, thus exponentially increasing the value of this project. Thanks for checking out my work, and I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you think there's something here for you.